Hello and welcome to another of our MMU Q-Step video tutorials. Today we're going to be looking at post hoc tests and asking what they are and why they're important. Whenever we perform an ANOVA or its non-parametric equivalent, the Kruskal-Wallace, then if our result is non-significant, we simply report the result. However, if we have a significant result, then we need to perform a post hoc test. So while an ANOVA lets us know whether there are significant differences between groups, a post hoc test allows us to look at which groups significantly differ from one another. You might be thinking why we need to run another test after we've just carried out a test. If we've got a significant result in our ANOVA, can't we just leave it at that? Well, let's imagine we're looking at the relationship between how urban the place you live is and the amount of sleep you get per night. We decide to run an ANOVA or a Kruskal Wallace where our dependent variable is average number of hours slept per night and our independent variable is the type of place you live, split into city, town and village. If our ANOVA was significant, this would tell us that there are significant differences in how much you sleep based on where you live. But without a post hoc test, we wouldn't know among which groups those differences were. So it could be that people in cities sleep more than those in villages, but it could be that people in villages sleep more than those in cities. Simply reporting a significant result without using the post hoc test is a bit like a detective in a murder mystery showing up and saying one of you is the murderer, but not saying who, which isn't very helpful. So we decide to run a post hoc test for our sleep and place you live and over. The post hoc test compares between every category of your independent variable to see where there are significant differences in the dependent variable. So here, a post hoc test compares the average amount of sleep between cities and towns, between cities and villages, and then finally between towns and villages. The post hoc test gives us a p-value for each comparison which if it is below 0.05 indicates there are significant differences between those two categories. So in our case, there are significant differences in average amount of sleep between cities and towns. There are also significant differences between cities and villages, but there are no significant differences between towns and villages in average amount of sleep. We then need to look at the means for our categories to see which direction these differences are in. So here we see the average amount of sleep for people living in cities is 6.5 hours, for towns is 7.5 hours, and for villages is 7.8 hours. So using the results of our post hoc test, we can say that people in cities sleep significantly less than those in towns and villages, but that while people sleep on average longer in villages than in towns, this is not a significant difference. So remember, Whenever you run an ANOVA or a Kruskal Wallace and you get a significant result, it's vital that you perform a post hoc test too. Otherwise, you're only telling half of the story. Thanks for watching another of our MMU Q Step video tutorials, and we'll see you next time. Created using Powtoon.